Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, Grammar Tool from the Islamic University. We continue our online uh, sessions. Today, we uh, do uh, gerunds and infinitives, uh, uh, part uh, one. <clears throat> uh, I'll be posting this uh, PowerPoint file so you can have a look at the uh, information, the exercises. Uh, the session begins with uh, questions that will be covered later on. Uh, during the class. Uh, these uh, statements or sentences contain one error each and you need to uh, find the error and fix it based on the gerunds and infinitives we will be discussing uh, shortly. Now uh, a gerund is the ing form of, uh, of the verb and it's usually used, it's actually used as a noun can be a subject like playing is fun or playing tennis is fun. Can be used as an object like we enjoy playing or we enjoy playing tennis. And also can be used as an object to a preposition. He is excited about playing or he's excited about playing uh, tennis. So in A, it's subject. In B, it's the gerund is object. In C, the gerund is also object, but it's an object to a preposition. On the other hand, the infinitive is to plus the, sim the simple or the base form of the verb, like to see, to be, to go. Uh, likewise, the infinitive can be used as a subject. To play tennis well takes a lot of practice. To master English takes a lot of practice. Or as an object, he likes to play uh, tennis. He likes to play tennis, this is an object to, to the verb. So like the gerund, the infinitives can be used as subjects and as objects, but it is, notice this, it's more common for the infinitive to be used as, as object. Now there are uh, uh, common verbs that should be followed by gerunds, by the verb plus ing. I'm listing uh, most of them here, and these are examples. I enjoy playing tennis. So we use playing because the verb enjoy should be followed with uh, uh, the gerund. Joe quit smoking. Smoking is gerund followed uh, after the, the verb quit. He quit smoking, he quit swimming, he quit uh, playing or he quit uh, oversleeping. And remember, all these gerunds can be replaced by a noun. So you say, Joe quit his job. Joe quit working or teaching. Joe gave up smoking. Now there is a list of these verbs. This is, this is a list of the most common verbs that are followed by a gerund. You have to memorize them and learn them. Uh, enjoy, appreciate, mind, quit, give up, finish, get through, start, avoid, postpone etc etc it says here there's a note here about suggest suggest uh, uh, there's also another note about stop but we'll talk about stop in a bit stop can also be used with a subjunctive uh, noun clause that we mentioned earlier like uh, i suggested he go he see a doctor uh, uh, you can take your time to do these exercises i collected from uh, your book so the question says complete the gerunds using the appropriate verbs from the list. Use these verbs, be, drop, go, have, make, pay, or read. They can be either uh, in, in a gerund form or in an infinitive form. Actually, actually, no, there's basically, uh, they are basically uh, to be used in the gerund form. So this is a very easy exercise. So mind is followed with a gerund. Get through is followed with a gerund. Consider, consider is followed with or by a gerund. <clears throat> now, again, similarly, there are common verbs that should be or must be followed by infinitives. I hope to see. He promised to be. He wanted to be, to do. And again, there is a list of, uh, uh, of these uh, verbs that you can you can follow. <clears throat> I 
hope to, promise to, plan to, agree to, intend to, offer to, decide to, refuse to, seem to, appear to, pretend to, all these verbs have to be followed with the infinitive form of, of the verb. There's, an, there's a note here about intent that can, uh, intent can also be used in the German form with no difference in meaning, but that's not a big issue. <clears throat> now, there are other structures for the infinitives, infinitives with objects. Look at this. Mr. Lee told me to be here. So, to tell somebody to. The police ordered the object, the driver, to stop. You don't say, Mr. Lee said me. You could say, said to me. Told me to be there. I was told to be there. The driver was ordered to stop. And there's also another list here of verbs that should be followed with object and, and infinitive. The same thing here with the structure. I expect to pass the test or I expect Mary to pass, to pass the test. Now, uh, sometimes, Again, there are uh, verbs that can be followed by either infinitives or germs. And sometimes there is a change, difference in meaning, and sometimes there's no difference in meaning at all. So look at these verbs. They basically begin, start, continue, like, love, prefer, hate, can't stand, can't bear. They are followed with uh, infinitive or gerund without a difference in meaning. Say, so it began to rain, it began raining, the same meaning. I started to work, I started working, the same meaning. But notice here, if the tense, the main verb in the sentence is in the progressive, present uh, continuous, present progressive, past progressive, past continuous, it has to be followed with infinitive, not, not the gerund. Now, there are other verbs that can be followed by either infinitive, infinitives or gerunds with a difference uh, in meaning. The book lists uh, uh, remember, forget, try, and stop. I'll focus on stop because it's uh, the easiest one. So again, look at this sentence. The student stopped talking when the professor entered the room. Now, the room is quiet. When Anne saw her professor in the hallway, she stopped to talk to him. So sentence number one, you, you, you're doing something and you stop doing it because something happens, because some, somebody shows up. But the second one, stop to, stop to here means stop in order to talk to him. So if you say, I stopped talking to Suad, it means she's no longer my friend. We don't talk anymore. I stopped talking to her. She's not my friend. She's no longer my friend. But I stopped to talk to Suad. It means you were walking, you were working, you're doing something, and you stopped. You stopped walking or you stopped doing something in order to talk to Suad. So Suad is still your friend in the second sentence. There's an exercise here. He stopped talking to me. He stopped to talk to me. What's the difference? He stopped smoking and he stopped to smoke. So again, these are verbs that are followed with either infinitive or gerund with a difference in, in meaning. Now, uh, uh, probably uh, a more important issue here in terms of the gerunds is the gerunds used after prepositions. You have to memorize these prepositions and to understand that they should be followed with either a noun or phrase sometimes or clause or uh, a gerund. So we, we say, we talked about going. Sue is in charge of organizing. I am interested, look at this, you don't say I interested or I interesting or I am interesting. I am, am interested is an adjective here. I am interested in learning. I am used to sleeping. I am accustomed to sleeping. I look forward to going home. Even these verbs, uh, uh, these structures 
uh, with tuk 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 are, are followed with gerunds. You need to memorize them. Uh, I look forward to going, to seeing, this is a famous sentence you, you use in your correspondence. You send an email or text I look forward to hearing from you. I am looking forward to hearing from you, to receiving your answer. It could be a noun. It could say, I look forward to your visit. We talk about going to the meeting. If there's an, a negative, the negative has to be before the journey. You don't say we talk not about going. You say we talk about not uh, going to, to the meeting. So again, this is a very important issue here where we have uh, you need to be careful to use the correct preposition about here, of here, in here, uh, to here, and follow them with a journal. This is a list from your book, the adjectives and verbs that are followed uh, by certain prepositions plus a journal. You should be familiar with this. Now, there's also this interesting structure after go. If go, or any of its uh, forms, go, goes, went, has gone, have gone, had gone, is going, is followed with an activity, it should, this activity should be in the gerund form. Did you go shopping? We went fishing yesterday. So go is followed by a gerund in certain dramatic expressions when there is some kind of recreational activity. And there is, this is a long list. Go biking, go dancing, go fishing, go hiking, go jogging, go bird washing, go mountain climbing, go swimming, go window shopping, all interesting expressions to know and to use in your daily speeches. Now, again, there are also other expressions, usually phrases or clauses that can be followed by, by gerund. We had fun. We had fun playing volleyball, or we had a good time playing volleyball. I had trouble, or I had difficulty, or I had a hard time, or a difficult time finding his house. Sam spends most of his time studying. I waste a lot of time watching. She sat at her desk doing homework. I stood there wondering. He is lying in bed, reading. When I walked into my office, I found George using. I caught a thief looking through my, uh, my desk drawers. So these are expressions that should be, that have to be actually followed by the leader. Now look at this. This structure, it plus infinitive, how this can be rewritten in different ways. If you say it is difficult to learn a second language, it means learning a second language is difficult. It also means in the infinitive form, to learn a second language is difficult. These three sentences are basically the same meaning. So it is difficult to, it means Gerard can be used or infinitive can be used here. It is easy for young children to learn a second language. Learning a second language is easy for young children. To learn a second language is easy for young children. Okay, and now this is followed by uh, again exercises. This uh, exercise covers the whole uh, uh, issues discussed above. Uh, each sentence again contains an error. You need to find it and to correct it. I don't mind to have a roommate. Actually, should be I don't mind because mind should be followed by John. I don't mind having a roommate. Having a roommate. Go through them and find the errors and fix them and uh, try to practice saying these sentences and other uh, sentences in the society. So basically, when you talk about the gerund and the infinitive, sometimes you need to memorize which verbs should be followed with which prepositions or with uh, gerunds or with infinitives. And this has to be a second sense. So I'm going to go through this very quickly. A gerund is the verb plus ing. The infinitive is uh, the simple form of the verb uh, preceded by to. Here, like when you say going, playing, eating. Here, when you say to go, to, to be, uh, uh, to eat. 
there are common verbs that should be that ha that have to be followed with gerund like enjoy like uh, quit like uh, give up and uh, there are common verbs that should be followed by infinitives like hope want promise all have to be followed by uh, two plus uh, the uh, the infinitive there are other structures that should be followed with infinitive in this case he told me to the police ordered the driver uh, uh, to I expect Mary to pass uh, the test. Now there are verbs that take both gerunds and infinitives with no change in meaning. The list is begin, start, continue, like, love, prefer, hate, can't, stand, can't bear, can't stand, sorry, can't bear. Uh, you say I can't stand losing, I can't stand to lose. I know some Grammar box would say there is a difference between I, I, uh, I love reading and I love to read. But the, 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 the difference is not actually that big. So some people say, I like reading, that's general. But I like to read when I am alone, when I am uh, commuting. But still, the difference is not that huge. Uh, there are verbs. Uh, where there's a huge difference in meaning between whether it is followed by, by infinitive or gerund, like remember, forget, try, and stop. I'm focusing here on stop because it's easier for, for you. This is a, uh, for you to compare. It's an exercise. And then uh, there are, again, prepositions. Usually, prepositions are followed with either a noun or a gerund. You need to know the, the preposition and the correct preposition. Always check a dictionary if you are in doubt. And usually we use gerund. You say, instead of studying, instead of uh, working, he was playing. Don't say instead of play. It should be followed with a gerund. This is a famous list from your book. You can go through it again and again. If go is followed with, a, with an activity, it should be in the gerund form. Uh, she, she went shopping yesterday. We want to go swimming tomorrow. Now, there are also certain expressions followed by gerund, like we had fun playing. Uh, uh, we had a good time playing. Did you have a good time watching? I had trouble, difficulty uh, answering the question. She spends her time watching TV. She wastes her time watching TV. If you say spend, it's something good. If you say waste, it's something not good, useless. If you say he, he spends his time watching TV, he watches good TV programs, documentaries, beneficial stuff, useful. If you say he wastes his time watching TV, he's just doing uh, uh, unnecessary things, useless things, or instead of studying, he's doing, uh, he's watching, just watching TV. Now look at these, again, beautiful structures. If you use it, verb to be an infinitive, it can be rewritten using the gerund and the infinitive. It is difficult to learn a second language. Learning a second language is difficult. To learn a second language is difficult. And then again, we finish with the exercises. Thank you very much. If there are any uh, questions, please uh, do ask.